Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to clean up your paint gun after spraying clear coat. So clear coat, especially this catalyzed clear coat, isn't quite like other paints. It hardens faster. It cures rather than just drying. It gets very, very sticky very quickly and it can jam up your paint gun really, really bad. Now I've just finished spraying a bunch of this stuff through my gun here, so it's still got some clear coat in it. I've emptied the cup. I'm gonna spray out the last of what's in the gun. Um, I highly recommend that you continue to wear your mask throughout the entire cleaning process. Your gloves as well, I'm gonna put mine on in a second. Sorry, I'm just cleaning out the last of what's in there. Um, if you can't tell why I'm not wearing a mask right now for this video, then you probably shouldn't be playing with chemicals anyway. But uh, yeah, you're gonna need solvents for this. So like I said, mask is important, gloves, very important. Solvents can go right through your skin into your bloodstream if you're not careful. So make sure you're protecting yourself from all of that stuff as much as you can. Now, as far as choosing your chemicals, there are some gun washes and stuff like that available. I tend to go with the easy to come by stuff because it works just as well for me. So I have a cup here that's got methanol in it and I'm gonna start with that. You can also use lacquer thinner. I don't recommend using acetone. I find that it's too strong and it tends to melt through stuff like your seals, for example, or create melting in some of the paint cups. So I start by pouring that in here, swirling it around to kind of get some of the paint off the edges, and then I spray it away from myself, of course, while wearing a mask. Then, again, the full face mask to protect your eyes because this can spray back at you. I plug the end of the cap and back flush it and then spray some more. Now, if you have a gun washer, the machine, you obviously don't need to do all of this. Um, and sometimes if you're only putting this down for a little while and then you're gonna go back to spraying, that's perfectly adequate. You can just run some, some solvent through the gun and that takes care of a good portion of what's in there. But I'm putting this one away for a few days after this, so I need to take it a step further. And I, I think if you want to be careful, which you probably do, you're gonna to wanna to disassemble your gun. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer here so that you can see how I do this portion of it. It's a little bit more complicated than that but still all in all relatively straightforward. So for the full cleaning, we're gonna have to disassemble the gun. You're gonna want a few cleaning things. Make sure you've still got your solvents around. We'll start by just kind of taking this apart and get your paint cap off of there first. A little bit of chemical still in there. I'm gonna take a Q-tip and clean out the bottom of my, my um, paint cup here make sure there's nothing residual in there where it meets the gun. Now I'll clean out the other part after, but there's gonna be more residual paint in sticking to the inside of the, the cup than there is to this area. And I don't wanna contaminate all my stuff with that right away. So I just start with the bottom using a Q-tip and a shop towel. So that's good for now. I'll come back to that after. Now I know that the paint runs into here, I want better access to that. So I'm gonna start by disassembling the rest of this. Make sure you're checking your fan cap. If there's paint all over your fan cap, chances are your spray settings aren't correct. Uh, you really shouldn't have a bunch of paint on here. I find that it doesn't hurt, obviously, to take my solvent and just kinda give this a quick wipe down, but if you're getting a bunch of buildup on here, then, then something else is wrong. There really shouldn't be much of an issue with that. Next is the nozzle. I don't always take the nozzles out of my guns. Actually, I'll take the needle out first. I don't always take the nozzles out of my guns. I do always take the needle out when I'm done spraying and take my Q-tip or my shop towel and make sure I carefully clean all of that. And in many circumstances, that's enough. But if you want to be certain, you're gonna have to take your nozzle off. So almost every gun comes with a little wrench. You can use a normal wrench or one of these. They often have a bunch of different sizes on them. So you have to make sure you're using the one that actually fits your nozzle so you don't damage anything. And just unscrew that. This gun in particular uh, is my DeVilvis FLG4, my finish line. 
Uh, this one is also available in the description. It's one of my favorites. This and the Warwick guns are the ones that I use all the time. Particularly nice thing about this is that the package comes with three different nozzles, a 1.3, a 1.5, and a 1.7. So I use the 1.5 as my clear coat gun, uh, nozzle. If I decide I want to spray color through this gun, which I, I generally don't because I have several paint guns and I use them all for different things, but if I want to spray color through this one, I'll use a 1.3. And if I'm trying to spray a harsher sealer type thing, something a little bit thicker, then I'll jump up to a 1.7 sometimes, even though a 1.5 is generally adequate. So to clean the nozzle here, I just run my Q-tip through the inside of it. You can also use one of these brushes, a wire, and sorry, a pipe cleaner brush that generally will come with a gun to get in there. But I like to just use a Q-tip for the most part. It's perfectly adequate. And there we have it, clean nozzle, no problem. If your nozzles get really bad, they are entirely metal, you can simply drop them into some solvents for a couple hours and let them clean out that way. Now I've got a little bit of clear on the outside of my gun, so I am going to go ahead and wipe it down as well, clean up the outside more for an aesthetic standpoint than anything else, but also so that I don't end up with any issues with my trigger assembly sticking or anything like that. If you've got a very cheap gun, something from Harbor Freight or something along those lines, be very careful about doing this. You might not want to do it with solvents because it can cause your finish to come right off. In fact, let me see if I've got something kicking around that I can demonstrate that with. Here we go, turns out I do. This gun was very inexpensive and it was all a nice anodized green, kind of similar to that before, um, but I cleaned it and now it's, you know, it got some paint on it, so we went and took some solvents and tried to wipe the paint off, and we wiped off whatever they coated it with. And if you look at it closely, uh, this handle isn't even prepared the way that necessarily you would want to prepare this kind of metal for paint. Not that it doesn't work, this gun works fine. It's a 2.3 millimeter nozzle. It's great for spraying stuff that you generally wouldn't put through a fancier gun because it's not necessarily even made for a paint gun. It's pretty much a garden hose good for what it's good for. I'm just saying, if you're using a cheap gun, be careful about cleaning the outside. Now at this point, we're pretty much just left with the gun assembly itself. So I've still got my methanol over here, a um, little bit out of frame. And here is where I can use my Q-tip again, come in from the top and make sure I get those threads cleaned out and everything. So come in and make sure I got the threads and then there's a hole in there that protrudes goes through to the gun assembly itself. Hopefully you can see the Q-tip in there. So make sure you get that all cleaned out. It's gonna take a couple Q-tips to do the whole deal, of course. And then, I mean, this stuff's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna, <laughs> you're just gonna go in with your solvents and clean everything. And you can use your pipe cleaner as well to do the same thing. All right, so that's, basically all there is to it. If you do get a back leak down into the packing nut back here, you can unscrew that, pull your handle back, and clean that out from the back as well. But that should be a very uncommon process. Generally speaking, you don't want to have to be touching your packing nut. If at all possible, you just set that up the first time. You can use, follow one of my videos on how to set up your paint gun. Set that up the first time and then just leave it because it's designed to clamp down on your needle with a specific pressure based on the way you spray and it shouldn't need to be touched again after you do it the first time. And that is how you clean your paint gun. Final point of practice, I generally store mine without the needles in them. Um, if you get the needle end nozzle in there, like you would have it when you're spraying and there's a little bit left in there somewhere, a little bit of clear coat, it can harden and cause the two to stick together pretty hard and that can create some problems for you later. Nothing that's not fixable, but more of a pain than it's worth. So I store them separately. I put them back together when it's time for me to spray. It only takes a minute. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my safe practice tip. So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hate the feeling of gloves. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you can see the cool projects that we got coming out with this clear and whatnot. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks, have a good one. I'll see you next time.